Hi, I'm Brian Jukes, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the steps to convert this simple Zeus snap into this uh, fine art image. I'll take you through the whole image uh, selection process. I'll take you through the Lightroom process that I go through, and I will take you through the Photoshop process to actually end up with the final image. And hopefully you'll learn something along the way. I won't necessarily show you the best ways to do things in Photoshop. I'll just show you the way that I do things or how I generally do things. I'll try to take a very non-destructive process through that. Um, so hopefully there will be some things that you may learn from that in the process. Maybe not, but at least you'll see how I do it. And I've been asked quite a lot uh, on the internet as to how I actually convert some of my images over to these fine art images and uh, I thought it was about time that I recorded some. So, Before yeah. I get into the editing process I'd just like to explain why I shoot so many zoo animals. Um, the main reason is cost. In order to get over to Africa where I see the animals that I'd like to see in the wild it's a huge cost and I just don't have that level of money uh, to be able to spend on, on that. Zoos within the UK are readily available to me and a huge proportion of those zoos work hard on conservation and by spending my money going through the gates of these zoos that's contributing to the conservation of these animals. One thing I don't like though is that when I do photograph zoo animals is to see the animals within cages, within confines, within their compounds. A lot of animals will naturally stay where the food is, which is around the compound area. So you see a lot of concrete, you see some buildings, you see some cages, you see some fences. And I'm very, very careful when I photograph uh, zoo animals to firstly try to minimize the amount of that in, in the background. You'll also obviously see other visitors around the zoo. And, and why wouldn't you? Um, you're not the only person walking around the zoo. So again, whenever I shoot, I try to minimize the amount of uh, people, the amount of fences, the amount of compound areas that are in the zoos um, that I can see in my shots. The other thing that I'm very, very careful of is that, you know, if I take a photograph of the zoo, it will start off looking like a quick snapshot, even with a very expensive camera. And what I don't want to do is present my final image in a way in which people go, that animal there is from a zoo. It's really, really important for me that the animal is the star of the show with the image. And it's very, very important that whenever I present an animal that I've photographed in a zoo, that there's no element of that zoo left in that. And that's why I go through this process. The rhino that you're going to see in a moment is no different from that. I took it at a zoo. Uh, the one that I will select uh, in the end image was from Whipsnade Zoo. The rhinos had a large compound area to wander around, but of course they hang around the area where there's a lot of food for them. Um, and in the background there were cars and people, um, at, which you wouldn't just wouldn't get in 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 Africa. Um, so. I have to edit this. I have to take that source image from the snap that it is from a from a from a zoo image into a fine art image, and this is the process that I go through. So the first part of that process is image selection. So let me take you through the processes that I do in order to select the candidate image that I want to work on. So here we are in Lightroom. Um, I've got a number of candidate images that I could potentially use for this particular rhino picture that I want to create. Now, let me just discuss the, the rhino image that I have in my mind. We have a um, rhino that will be standing very proud, very majestic at the top of a hill, uh, all on his own, uh, just looking very grand. Um, very simple uh, background uh, with some grass uh, on the hill. Um, so a lot of these images that you see in front of us already have some grass in them and um, maybe I can use some of that. And a lot of these images uh, do have some very majestic looking rhinos. So let's just go through these one at a time. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just press the F key uh, for full screen. And here we can see a rhino 
that was in a compound. And, and remember what I said earlier about the fact that uh, a lot of the zoo animals that I take will be in a compound. They had the freedom to go off and wander across the grasslands, but of course they want to hang around where it's nice and warm, where it's nice and safe, and also where there's lots of food. Uh, this is an, a nice uh, rhino image. It, it is a rhino image that I've used before. Uh, if I zoom in, there's some fairly nice definition uh, here that we've got. And it was a relatively easy image to cut out from its background. Um, but as I say, I have used it before, so I'll move over to the next image. Uh, the same zoo, um, different rhinos. Again, here we have a, a rhino that has a, a very interesting horn. Um, and there's something odd going on here. It probably moved whilst I was photographing it. Um, and some pretty harsh shadows going on on that particular rhino. And on this one, it's just out of focus. Um, again, the, the look that I'm looking on here is because he's kind of slightly side on, slightly forward. Um, probably not the image that I'm looking for. Uh, move to the next one. Again, the angle for this for me is probably not on. He's got his nose right the way down. He's not standing majestic and neither is the, the rhino behind it. Uh, this one, wow. Okay, so here we've got a really interesting rhino, really standing proud, chin up in the air, and look at me, everybody, aren't I wonderful? Um, if I take a look at this rhino, there's some really nice definition going on here, a little bit blown out uh, at the top, but those sh uh, the highlights can be recovered there. I don't think it's totally blown out. There's a little bit of blurring here where I think there was a bit of movement um a bit of a harsh shadow on the horn but i like the the way that he's extending his neck out um look down here it's a little bit soft focus on the back leg uh, i must have had a really low f-stop for this particular image and then we get into the mess of uh, how easy would this be to select from the background we've got another rhino behind him and you know we've got one two three four five legs uh, to choose from and yes this leg is the rhino behind but it does add to the complication there's really no defined edge there it's a difficult one um, it's a nice pose i like it um, but we'll see so what i'm going to do is just press the four key to put four stars against this particular rhino image so that later on I can go back and see and compare it to other ones that I think may be better. Next rhino, again, pretty nice pose. He's already on some grass, so we can perhaps use some of this grass to, um, to, to blend him in with. Um, fairly defined edges if I look around. Um, again, that's just the top of his ear on the other side. Um, but nice and stern and pretty sharp. Not a bad image at all. Um, there's possibly a little bit of movement on his skin here. It's just slight blur, but on the whole, pretty good. Except the fact that actually uh, the direction of this um, uh, rhino is facing away from the camera a little bit. So he's just got his back turned. So again, I think I'll go for a four for this but it probably won't be my final image. Okay, on here, rhino's lying down, so not particularly interesting and not the uh, rhino that I'm looking for for this particular image. Uh, here we've got a couple of rhinos um, having a, a little bit of a tussle. Uh, this is a, a whipsnade zoo, but here, as we can see, the head is out of focus. There's some movement going on here. Slow, uh, slow shutter speed was used and that's not particularly sharp either so next okay we've now got three rhinos um i don't really want a, a rhino's back side for this particular image um so let's look at the other two again not particularly sharp um lots of debris on him or her and again the next one um, is even less sharp so again, not those. Okay, so this one here 
has the potential. Um, he's very square onto the face. Unfortunately, he's got his chin buried in the grass, which is not really what I'm looking for. I really would like a chin up uh, type of view. But other than that, you know, the, the actual front view is, is pretty good. Um, and obviously I wasn't the only person photographing him at the time. Okay, now this is more around this sort of area that we want. Um, nice, proud tail, pretty defined edges. But sadly, the chin is down, buried in the grass, eating the grass, and why wouldn't he or she? Um, again, not worried about the feet being buried in the grass because that will be part of my final image. And there's a little bit of movement here, so not quite this particular one, but we're getting closer. Okay, we're back to the two rhinos um, together. An awful lot of debris on there. That would take a lot of editing out. Not impossible. Um, we could certainly remove remove all of this if we wanted to, but it's a lot of work. And again, the head is slightly tilted away from the camera. This would be tricky to cut out uh, entirely, but again, not impossible. And I think there's a third rhino behind him because here you can see some remnants of another rhino. That makes it tricky. Uh, again, this, this rhino here, we're not going to be able to use him because he's hidden behind this one. And okay, so what have we got? This looks pretty good. Um, we have a rhino standing proud. That's just a little unsharp on the head. But everywhere else looks looks really good, the, the tail. So what I'm going to do here is is press the P key to select that and press the 4 key uh, to star it with 4. So already I think we may have one candidate image. There's not too much to clean up on this. There's a few bits of debris around them, a few little marks that can be cleaned up, uh, but nothing too major. So let's go to the next image. Oh, so same rhino taken pretty much directly after it and already we have uh, heads further up much much sharper we've got some nice light on the head there and the horn uh, again everything's nice and sharp feet are buried in the grass but that's fine and the tail is nice and sharp so this is already my candidate image so again i'll press the p key to select it and Press the 5 key because this is so far my, my best image. And if I go back to the previous image, we can see here the difference between the two. So uh, zoom in there, slightly unsharp. Next one, uh, zoom in there, and it's really sharp. So I think that's probably the, the one. And again, the same rhino here. And there's just something about the, the way that the head has now dropped a little bit, the jawline. It almost looks a little bit sad in its face, and I, you know, I'm pretty sure rhinos can't smile, uh, but it just looks a little bit sad for itself. And more importantly, here it's a little bit out of focus. Um, but other than that, that would have been quite nice as well. And then on to the final, and again, here that's not an improvement at all. And again, we just need to watch the pose here so. You know, he's got a leg behind him, but it looks like the leg is coming out of his chin. We, we know that's not the case, but um, it does look awkward. Um, this is a, a younger rhino taken at a different zoo. Uh, light was changing on this all of the time, um, from very bright to very dark. Um, and I obviously caught it in a moment where I actually needed to um, increase the exposure somewhat. But this is all stuff that we can bring back. There's lots of details in the shadows here, so I, I'm not worried about that. The, I think the thing with this particular rhino is the fact that the rhino is young. And that's not going to be the look that we go for. Again here, the same rhino, just in a different pose. So there we go. There, there, those were the images that um, 
I uh, looked at and realistically we're looking at the choice between these two images here so if I press the N key to survey those we're looking at that one or that one and I think realistically we are going to go with this one here so I'm just going to press the 6 key to set the label to red for that one come out of the survey mode and now we have the image that we'll use for the edit and look at that there's a beautiful rhino here and uh, I think he'll look majestic at the top of our hill so the next part of this now is to actually edit the um, rhino okay so now we've got our image I'm just going to select that and go to D in the develop module and let's just take a good look at our image here um, so what I noticed straight away is that this particular image had a, a slow shutter speed uh, 1 1 25th of a second it's a little bit slow for wild animals um, they do tend to move around a little bit and, and even movement through breathing uh, you can often uh, find that 1 1 25th is a little bit slow um, but fortunately the rhino <laughs> was just uh, not moving an awful lot uh, when I took this, so it's not too bad. Um, I think the image itself should be pretty easy to um, isolate out from the background. Um, all the edges are fairly sharp and well defined. Um, and as you notice here, I used uh, F13 to, again to keep that nice and crisp. Uh, around there um, again it's another good idea if you want to use uh, your photographs um, for um, uh, taking out of their backgrounds to try and use a higher uh, f-stop so actually the, the edges of that are a little bit sharper and that makes that a lot easier to um, to do um, but there's a pretty good contrast as well with background here so it's not really merged into anything um, and, and again that should be pretty cool um, ISO 200 was used so if we zoom right the way in um, let's go to sort of 300 let's have a look um, there is a little bit of noise but it's not too noisy um, you know I might do something around that if let's zoom back out again um, and uh, lighting is good you know we've got we've got that light coming from the top here and on the back so that's going to work well with with the image that we want and i don't really need to recompose the lighting too much again a lot of shadow down there but i, I might hide that up so first things first what do we do uh, in terms of editing uh, as standard i pretty much always go to lens corrections and enable uh, lens correction here it didn't pick up this particular camera lens but it was a canon at the time that i shot it and now it's picked it up because i was using uh, a canon uh, 70 to 200 with a 1.4 extender on it as well uh, and also just out of habit i will press remove uh, chromatic aberrations although i don't actually see any any real aberrations in here um, we're quite zoomed in here so let's just zoom back out to two to one it's a little bit better um, again everything's pretty clear but there is a little bit of noise in the background due to the uh, ISO of 200 um, and for my fine image I may need to cut that out a little bit so before I do anything else I'm going to crop it um, I go into the crop tool and I'm going to select uh, one by one the reason that I do this is that um, one of the fairly standard things in my images is that um, I always um, have a square image. Um, it, it's just it's just something for me. I I prefer the look of a square image. Um, it's a personal choice. I know. There we go. Um, so what I'd like to do is just deal with this noise a little bit here and there is a tool for this that is external uh, to Lightroom uh, that I have started to use um, on some images where there is a little bit of noise we could clean it up a little bit um, so if I was to go into the detail settings here I could actually raise the luminance here and as you can see that takes away that noise um, but what it also does is it smooths out some of the other details which I don't really want to do 
So I'll press the Control Z key to undo that and zoom back out again. And I have um, I have uh, the Topaz Denoise AI tool installed here. This is a part of the process that you might like to uh, skip and, and perhaps with your image, your image it has a, a lot less noise or, or noise that you're not really worried about, but I'll take you through that process anyway. So to get into um, Topaz Denoise, we edit in and select Topaz Denoise AI here. We'll edit a copy because we have made some changes to our Lightroom image. And that also means I've always got the original image to go back to. So here we are in the Denoise um, application. And already here you can see I haven't even touched uh, any of the settings, but just straight out of the box, uh, this is what we've got. And, and if I change the view to um, side by side view here, once that's re-rendered, you can see here is the original view and there's a little bit of noise here, but over here is absolutely clear. And then if we move that over there and then it re-renders again, you know, we're, we're absolutely maintaining sharpness. Now I have messed around with this particular image before, so I know what the settings are that I need and we, this was a, a case of using uh, automatic detection to try and select the right values and then tweaking those until I actually found something that worked well with, with me. Um, so we've chosen the denoise model. We'll take off auto selection, remove noise to 10, um, sharpen to 40 don't want it quite as sharp as it selected uh, recover original detail zero uh, low light mode is off and color noise reduction is off and as we can see now if we go back to the single view and let that render with those we can see here this is beautifully sharp and it's just, just right um, and so then all we have to do from this is just press save image that will process away and then it will eventually take us back to Lightroom where we can start to do some further work on it. So now we're back in Lightroom. We have the newly edited uh, photo. And if we zoom in on, his, on this now, you can see how that's cleared up the noise entirely around that and retained the sharpness that we wanted. So here I am back from Topaz and I just wanna make a few uh, basic adjustments uh, in Lightroom. Um, so I'm going to decrease the highlights a little bit here um, just to take the emphasis off that area uh, right at the front here because again there is some detail there but it also looks a little bit blown out. Um, it's not blown out if I hold down the show clipping here that's not blown out so that's okay. I want to increase the shadows somewhat here so let's bring up the shadows to probably roughly the same sort of area. Around about there that will do. Uh, let's increase the blacks as well because that's quite dark and it's, it's not clipping but it is quite dark. Uh, so let's bring the shadows, uh, the blacks up um, and around about there will do. Um, again, texture-wise, the Rhino's got some texture, but actually texture will um, help with sharpening it as well without actually you know, going through the sharpening process. So if we bring that up a little bit around about there, that's lovely. And again, some clarity here. Um, clarity will help to to increase the sort of contrast um, in, in many ways. Um, so again, clarity around about there will do. And again, uh, just some vibrance now, just to bring out the colors of that uh, rhino a little bit. 
Um, a little bit more, maybe. They're around about there, we'll do. Okay. Now, the only other thing that I can see on this image, and it's very marginally noticeable, um, but there is a very slight um, angle here to where the rhino is, and, and I can probably straighten that up, and that's just being a little bit um, of a perfectionist in terms of wanting the composition. And, and also by rotating the the uh, rhino on this uh, horizontal level here, it will actually uh, bring the nose up as well, um, which will be quite useful. And it is, as I say, only small amount. So what I've done here is I've gone into the crop tool, and as you notice here, as, as you uh, hold your mouse uh, on the right-hand edge or on the left-hand edge, you've got um, a new mouse pointer that, that shows that you can rotate. So holding down the mouse, it brings up the finer grid, and now I'm looking at the the line that comes around here uh, and just rotating it a little bit here so that we get, there we go. And that brings it out a little bit more even on both sides of his legs. So this side and this side now are pretty much in line with each other and then press done. Again, that crops it a little bit tighter. Um, because the Lightroom has um, squared it off with, with the image. Um, but again, I'm not worried about this because that's all I'm going to select is this Rhino. Uh, so from this point in, uh, the rest of the uh, edit will take place in uh, Photoshop. So to take this uh, image into Photoshop, I will press the menu and select uh, Edit in Photoshop. Now, actually, what I'm going to do, rather than selecting Edit in Photoshop, I'm actually going to say Open as a Smart Image in Photoshop. And that will allow me to do the editing that I need to do in Photoshop as non-destructively as possible, because everything that I do from that point on is treating this image as a, a, a container, and then everything is applied to that container. So let's do that. Open Smart Image in Photoshop. That will take a few moments to transfer over to Photoshop. And there we go. We now have our image in Photoshop. And um, we have one layer. Uh, this is our layer that came from Lightroom as a smart object, and you can tell it's a smart object by this little icon here at the bottom. So I'm just going to go into one of the selection tools uh, so that I can press Select Subject. Now, Photoshop does a really good job of, of isolating the subject. Uh, this is a feature that's available with uh, Photoshop CC. Um, I don't believe it was available with uh, older versions of Photoshop. Um, but you can obviously use that um, if you've got uh, Photoshop CC like I have. And from there, we can um, go into further editing of this uh, selection. One of the methods that I like to do is to um, go into the quick mask and use a brush to select away areas of it. So if I press Q, that goes into the quick mask. And now we can see that um, we are um, indeed able to um, go select a brush and we have a brush here and all I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit and this allows me to now refine this edge somewhat more. Um, you could easily do it without going into the quick selection tool but this is the way that I prefer to do it. And then that will allow me to brush in either black or white. Um, and as you can see here, I'm currently in black and black is adding more red. That means more selection. So by pressing the um, X key, I can switch between black and white. You see over here, if I press X, it goes uh, black as foreground, white as background, X again, white as foreground, black as background. Um, and as I now, mark over it you can see now that i'm actually brushing that away but what i need to do is just increase the uh, flow that i've got here uh, up a little bit I, w I won't 
put it at 100 percent put it around there and also i want to just change the hardness of this brush it's a little bit hard but not totally hard okay um and i will go through the editing process pretty quickly and just brush away these areas that i don't want again zooming in holding down the space key so that i can move over the image and then trying to do the best job that i can with this but i'm not going to worry about it being too precise at this stage uh, because i will go through the refine edge tool as well but this is just to take away the, the majority of it again here i can see that the rhino's horn not captured properly and there's more to do there and we'll go around this and this is just really to get in and see here the we have the rhino's horn here and i've just switched back to black just to start marking that and again here rhino's horn needs to be brought in here just around that edge um, and again back to white to just take away some of that and then really it's just a case of just going around this um, selecting with the right tool at the time done a beautiful job around that um, but hasn't quite selected that didn't quite select as much of the uh, and now obviously it's picked up other areas and, and it did this because these areas were probably sharply in focus and, and they're pretty much in the same plane as the rhino is entirely so i'm just literally going to take those away we don't want any of those areas and i don't even want that area there and let's just increase the brush size so i can do that quicker I'm using my Wacom tablet in order to do this brushing. Hold down the space key, drag it across. I can see that's that is fine. And we'll decrease the brush for this and go back to black because I want to draw this in just to select the edge there. And again, I just want as much of the rhino as we can possibly get. And I do appreciate that obviously the rhino's feet are cut off a little bit and some of the rhino edges are not smooth. Here again, press back to white and we are going to shape around rhino's back side. Um, and again, this just needs to be rough at this stage, um, but this is the way that I do it. And I know a lot of people will do it very differently to me. Again, just take away that edge there. And black again, just selecting that bit up there. And move across. Again, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. You know, Photoshop did a really good job and just, just select the top of those ears. Really good job with select subject. Select subject has come a long way in the last year or two. Long, long way. And okay. And there we go. So that is most of that. So now we can actually press Q to come out of. Quick selection, what did I do then? I obviously made a mark um, with my pen as I wasn't looking. Take that away again. Press Q to come out of the quick selection now. And as you can see, everything that I've been drawing has refined these edges somewhat uh, from there. So now we need to go into select and mask. Uh, this will allow us to refine the edges entirely. Um, if I just zoom out a little bit, we can probably see the rhino that we selected. Um, here I've I've got high quality preview on, and I've selected this on white uh, here. 
uh, just so that I can see. Again, you could select whichever one of these modes um, works for you. Um, it may well be that you, you like the look of that one. For me, on white worked better. And then I can change the uh, opacity of that so I can have that less or more to actually just see where, where it's working for me. Um, already I can see I've missed a little bit here. Um, but I'm just going to select that around that point there. Uh, now what I will do is select some global refinements. Um, I will say I want two um, for the smoothness. I want a feather 0.3 of a pixel. Um, contrast 0, shift edge 0. And uh, now what I need to do is just select the refine edge tool, which is this one up here. Um, and go around the edge of the rhino to actually refine the edge. Now, be very careful when you're doing this that uh, by default here, as you can see, there's a plus in the in the mouse cursor, in the brush. Um, so that needs to be inside the edge that you'd like to select. And, and if I run around this now with this edge, and as I hold down here, you can see it's already taking away from there trying to process that and and then release and then it will make a selection um, and really it's a case of just running around the edges what I'll do now is just select the negative brush and do the inverse of that because it will actually be a much better selection And just go around, release, and it works it out. And then just run around the outside edges of this rhino. The Photoshop can be told to recompute its edges. Even where I think it's uh, what I'm doing every now and again, I'm just letting it have a chance. To uh, to think about what I've I've let it do and just going around the edges here. And this generally doesn't take too long to do. But again, you know, I'm rushing it for the purpose of this tutorial. In real life, I would spend a lot longer doing this because this process here is what really counts. Now, the, the better your selection, the better your final image will be. Getting there now. Not sure if the microphone is picking this up, but I can really hear my computer whirring away now as Photoshop is computing all of the maths behind doing all of this selection. Nearly there. One of these days, the um, select subject will, <laughs> will be super advanced and will do all of this for you. Um, I'm pretty confident of that because every release of um, the uh, select subject just gets better and better and better. Okay, now we've gone around through that. So now what I'll do is select the brush tool um, to actually go around areas that um, and just increase my brush size a little bit and 
zoom in because I, I'm pretty confident here that um, it hasn't done everything that it needed to do here. Um, so again, this is just really brushing in and brushing away uh, areas that you don't want to mask. Um, so again, select the negative brush. And what we can do here is just select that. And as you can see, it's just just going in just a little bit and shrink down just to get that sharp edge. And pick up any of these. Now again I'm going to show you a technique in a moment that will help to isolate some of the halos that we may end up with in the selection um i know i did when i did this image the first time around um there were some halos uh, which didn't look particularly nice um but this is this is the time uh, and part of the editing process where you will actually spend the longest And uh, in my edit on this video, I will probably fast forward this process somewhat because it's pretty, pretty boring to watch. And that all looks good. That all looks good. That looks good. Yeah, apologies for the lack of commentary during this one. I'm actually concentrating. Um, this proves that I can concentrate every now and again. Don't have to talk my way through everything. And move along. That all looks good. Okay. So, I think just a little bit more here. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much done now on this. So if I just zoom back out again, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to select the output to uh, layer mask and select OK. Okay, so what that has done now is that's created our uh, layer mask on this rhino and the other thing that we can do now is if we hold down the um, alt key and uh, we can just see our um, mask so what we can do is refine the mask now with the paintbrush so again hold down the space key to to drag it over uh, we have selected a brush already we're currently on black as the foreground so i'm going to press the x key again to, to change to white and here i can see here this is areas of the selection where it's really not um, very sharp at all and i want all of this so we'll just select that and just paint it back in again again this is pretty normal thing to do here to refine a mask just by using your paintbrush and making sure that it looks as sharp as it can do Again, it's a little bit up there. Shrink that down a little bit. And there we go. And a couple of little pieces here. This all helps. Every bit that we can do here will help. I 
let's just grass there so I'm not too worried about that and notice here that there's some areas of the black that I didn't uh, select so again let's change the key uh, the brush back to black and paint those out as well and I think that looks about Yes, I think that's about it. So again, pressing the Alt key on the mask will bring will bring the mask back into effect. Okay, so what we want to do now is create a background for this rhino because at the moment the rhino is just standing in fresh air. So if you come down to here and create a solid um, color layer and we need to select a color um, for this and, and this is essentially going to be the background what do we want behind the rhino or well, what we want behind the rhino is sky so we need to choose a color that is um, has an amount of blue in it um, but doesn't really have a, a lot of other colors so we want quite a light blue something like a e2 and uh, we we want um, um, something like that. It's a very very light blue here. Um, again, we can change our mind with this. It really doesn't make any difference at all. Um, press OK, and we will call this layer sky. And at the moment, obviously, the um, sky layer is. Uh, above the rhino so we can't see the rhino but if we drag that layer down now we have the rhino and let me just double click the hand tool to uh, just bring it back so there we go so there's the rhino um, completely with a sky background around it and here you can see there is a also a bit of a halo which we will deal with uh, in a moment as well Okay, um, so what I mentioned to, to you before was that the rhino would be um, have some sun in the sky. Uh, so to create the sun, we're going to create a new blank layer. And we're going to call this layer sun. And what I want to do now is absolutely and utterly zoom out as little as possible. Um, and on this new layer, what I'm going to do is select a def default colors to the default um, black and white. So press the D key just to make sure that I haven't selected any other colors. And then I'm going to press the X key to select white. I'm going to select a very soft brush. So we go brush, uh, let's drop down the brushes and we're going to choose a really soft brush. And I'm going to make it an absolutely massive brush, like 5,000 pixels. And then what I'm going to do is just dab that brush somewhere like that. Control Z, let's move it into the middle. Okay, so what you might be able to see now, and let, let me just um, move back to the hand tool, is there is a there's a white edge here, and so this this area here is really hard to see. Um, if I just temporarily uh, change this to a black uh, background you can see where the white has come in and that's created a bit of a highlight not quite in the right position that we want at the moment um, I'll cancel that because I don't want that color but what we can do here is we can press the control T key to do a free transform of this particular layer and now we can move that to where we're wherever we want um, I want the Sun coming in from the top right corner a uh, top left corner in fact it might help if I knew my left or my right um and somewhere like that and press ok so let's just do a little bit of housekeeping and uh, by doing so what we will do is we'll 
select the current sun layer, the current sky layer, and right click on those and do um, group from layers. And we'll call that um, background, which is exactly what it is. And on the Rhino layer, let's just rename that as Rhino. So, Rhino. Okay. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that there is a little bit of a halo around the Rhino. Um, so just zoom in a little bit. You can see here that there are edges to this. Um, and it is pretty noticeable, uh, to be honest. So what? let's deal with that right now. Let's just double click on the hand tool. Um, so dealing with the, the halo is, is pretty easy. Uh, so if you select the um, Rhino's layer mask and add a Gaussian blur to this, so we'll go into filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll select a pixel of one pixel. It's not really going to show much on this at the moment, but what that's going to do is just soften the edges of the... Um, of the mask down for us and then we can add a adjustment so if we go into image adjustments levels okay and this is where we will just increase the size of this rhino somewhat so we can actually see this um, and essentially what we need to do is just move the slide left hand slider around a little bit um, and as we do that wrong one sorry as we do that what you can see is it starts to shrink the image and you can see here as, as I'm doing that just take a focus on, on, on here and as I move around somewhat um, and we go all the way up to there and just to the point where it it just disappears and as we do that, it just disappears entirely. And this is just changing the, the level between the blacks and the whites of the mass. And by doing so, that's just contracting in a little bit. But because we had that Gaussian filter there, it should make sure the edges are, are, are more natural uh, to it. And we just press OK, and there we go. We've we've dealt with that um, halo. We've got a nice sharp image. Okay, so now I need to start to think about the final image um, already um, from the point of view of what how I want this composed. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that I want the rhino on on a hill. At the moment, if I do that, um, we can see the rhino is really close up against this edge, really close up, and it's quite low down in the frame. So what I'd like to do is to just recompose this image so that I've got a lot more space around it. Um, so the advantage that we already have is that we've used a solid color uh, background here. We may need to move our sun around if we do recompose this image a little bit, but um, it's quite easy now to actually just press the uh, crop key here and we can make this a lot bigger. Um, again, I want to retain the square um, um, format. And if I hold down the um, shift key and drag, it should drag. in that way and then hold down the shift key and drag that way so i'm just recomposing this image now so we have a lot more space around it and, and we can still um, change the composition of this image a little bit later if we need to um, but uh, just drag over this way a little bit and then just recompose for that I don't know why that's snapping over there all of the time. Um, but where do we want? Where do we want that? We want him around about there. 
And again, there's no right or wrong answers. It's just whatever looks good for you. And then we'll press the save button. So that's recomposed our rhino. We've still got our sun up there in the, in the top left hand corner. And we've got a lot of space down here to put um, some grass. And, and it may well be that we need to recompose it uh, in, in a position where um, the rhino is a lot lower down in our final image. Um, haven't yet decided. So I mentioned that the rhino will be stood on a on a grass hill. Um, so I need to bring in some grass content now. Uh, at the time of producing this image, I didn't have any usable grass in, in in the selection of photos that I had. None that really would fit in with it. So um, I scoured the Adobe stock images, and I paid for a an image of grass um, to use. And here we go. This is the image. So if I just drag that in. And again, you know, this looks nicely detailed. There's a lot of grass there. There's some long grass and some shorter grass. And yeah, it looks quite nice. Um, again, I, I'm not sure whether this was actually hand drawn or whether it was um, photographed, but it looks nice and um, uniform. Um, so what I need to do now is select the, the grass from the background. And I think looking at this image here, um, using select color would probably be, be a better choice because I've got this white background here uh, and hopefully it'll be quite easy to choose. So select and color range. And if I hold down the um, eyedropper here, we can see in the preview area up there, this is the range of color that is choosing um, if I was to select the greens, there's no real green to go with, but selecting white is already selecting most of the range here. Um, but what I've noticed is that the, there is a bit of a gradient to this white. So by pressing the plus key here and dropping there, I can select. You see here it's redder over here, so there's more white selected here than there is over here. So this white is a different color. And then just by pressing the dropper, I'm actually selecting all of the different shades of white that there are throughout this image um, and just selecting around. Okay, and we're going to select that to a quick mask. That's okay, and then we'll convert that quick mask into an actual mask by pressing the mask button there. And we have this the wrong way around now, it's masked out the grass and selected the white so let's invert that and we do that by pressing Control i for invert and now we have the mask but you notice here that we have some areas that are see-through um, what would be ideal now is if we hold down the alt key we can now see our mask and we'll pick up a brush by pressing the b key and giving ourselves a brush um, that's actually too big, so we'll come back down to a reasonable size um, and it can be fairly hard. And what we'll do is um, make sure we're on white and we'll literally just start painting in here all of the gaps because actually this is all grass down here and it must have just had lighter lighter grass elements in it. Um, we'll just make sure we've got all that selected because we don't need anything else. Okay, um, we can select the hand tool again and press the Alt key on the layer mask and now we can see everything that's through there. Now remember, uh, just as with the Rhino image, that there's there's probably a little bit of a halo going on. So if we just zoom in a bit on here, what we want to do is make sure those edges of those grass um, is is nice and fine. So what I'll do again is you just go back into this so what we did here with with the with the rhino before and we'll do the same again here is we will select the layer mask here as we've done we will add a gaussian blur filter to blur gaussian blur one pixel 
on that and again that's that's just blurring the edges of the grasses in the mask um, and then we'll do a levels adjustment so image adjustments levels and we'll literally just work on that until we're happy and i don't think there is much of a halo here to be honest just a little bit and we'll press OK. And there we go. OK, so now we've got the grass selected. We need to uh, copy this and, and bring that back into our Rhino image. Um, so one of the easiest way is just to do select, edit, copy. Go back over to the Rhino image and edit, paste. And that will put uh, a, a, a new layer with, with our um, rhino grass in place obviously it's not in the right place um, and we're probably going to build up more than one grass layer so first things first if I press ctrl T and then I can do a free transform on this and I can literally just drag that down until we've reached the point that we want and we'll do that and we'll press OK and then what I want to do is just duplicate a couple more different variations of this grass uh, down uh, just so that we can uh, have uh, multiple grasses around there and just build up that hillside. And what I need to do over the course of the, the next few edits is actually to shape that hill so that actually it's a little bit um, better in terms of its shape. It's not just the sort of flat grass that we've got. You know, and, and maybe in a different image that might have been sufficient. And don't worry at the moment about the fact that the feet are not touching the grass. We'll be fettling the grass away. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is just rename this as uh, grass top of mound. And remember, we're working from the background to the foreground in these layers. So we're going to duplicate this layer here. And we're going to call this uh, grass uh, middle. And I think three layers we could probably get away with. And we'll press Control T to transform that one. And again, we can drag that. So now you can see here. Um, and again, if I just bring that out a little bit and then change the size of this uh, again because we're, we're getting closer now um, to the foreground um, and just make that a bit bigger and press OK on that and then we'll, we'll duplicate that layer and there and this is grass foreground Okay, and again, control T, move that, and again, we can make this even bigger now. Again, because we're getting closer to the grass, we can get bigger with that and just stretch that out somewhat, uh, even more so than that. Okay, and what we'll probably have to do again is recompose this image because I'm probably not going to fill the rest of this. Okay. So as I said, what we're going to do now is just work on the shape of this grass a little bit. And, and then the other thing that we need to do is just try and apply some some um, blurring to this. Because again, the, the grass that's further away won't be quite as sharp as the grass that's nearer. Um, so what we need to do, and remember the rhino is in focus here. So actually the grass here is also going to be in focus. But as we come closer to the camera, this will be out of focus. And we'll deal with that in a minute. So the very first thing to do, we'll go back to the, the top of the mound and let's just get the grass here to be the right um, shape, the right size as well. Um, and we'll press Control T for that. And again, I think I'm just going to shrink the grass in terms of its size because I don't really want it to be terribly large and I don't really want it to be overshadowing the rhino too much um, so probably around there and what I'm going to do now is go into the sort of rear transform here where I can actually just start to, to drag it down a little bit and we'll just pinch it down here 
and here we just start to drag that down somewhat and we can stretch it out a little bit and then just drag those corners down and again just drag that down there we can still move the rhino don't forget that we can still move the rhino so just just want to push push that grass down there because i don't want it to be quite so long and this is just all about shaping this grass now to get that hillside okay and we'll go turn off that to transform and we'll move that back up a little bit here so we can see where we are with the rhino and go back to this reshaping um, again so we just drag that down and okay I think that might do for that at the moment we'll go back to the middle layer and again we'll go into control T and we will again move that around and this is where we're now just trying to look at blurring in all of those edges um, again I think there we go that works a little bit better we'll transform that and we'll drag the edge down there and over somewhat and over somewhat here as well again we just it's all all by free hand here now we're all just looking at, at how those edges align and that's not too bad actually and again because we are dragging it around the none of the grass is going to really match with just want to bring that down somewhat because i think that grass is just a bit too tall for my liking okay we'll go okay with that and then again with the top level so this is the foreground so this is the grass that's right close to the camera again control t and here we're going to again move it up probably make the grass even taller than it is at the moment and I spent a lot longer uh, fettling the grass than, than I, in, in the actual image than, I, than I'm going to do right now. Um, you know, just for the sake of, of what we're doing here. But again, just merge it over. Fettle away. Doesn't really matter. All we're doing is trying to shape a some sort of a mound and make sure there's no real white gaps in between so again we've done that we'll go back to the top of the mound again and we'll do some more transformations here uh, and again don't worry we can still move the rhino nothing's casting concrete at this stage and this is what we're talking about the non-destructive editing that we we've been doing so again what i'm doing here is just dragging that down drag that down there you see now we're already getting this this nice mound shape that's okay on that one we'll go back to the middle layer again control t and we'll hit the free transform part up there and again we'll just merge Bring that down a touch, bring that down a touch. And each time we're doing this, we're just exposing another little edge here. So it is just a case of, but what that's doing is filling in some of those gaps that we had. And making this look completely and utterly random as well. I think that's, almost done on that layer maybe just drag that down a touch more pinch him up there drag him down drag him down a little bit okay we can set up a grid sorry apologies of and that allows you to then actually by using the grid feature and this is something that came out a few versions ago in in photoshop we can now actually 
uh, isolate very specific areas of, of here where we want to just drag around so that's actually a little bit neater oh no we don't want that control z and just allows you to just play with all these sorts of things and let's go back Uh, we'll select OK with that and we'll go back to the top of the mound and again it is really just a case of just completely and utterly keep on reshaping um, work out exactly how you want it to look and we're almost there I think in this we'll press OK on that and then we'll go to the middle level again and uh, Control T and I think if we just drag him down a little bit, yeah, there we go. And again, back to the foreground, I think it's okay. Top of the mound, just a little bit more. Control T, it's just this edge here that I just don't quite like the look of. Um, and we're just literally there, okay. And I think that's probably about as much as I'm going to do with this particular um, image. Um, it says that, and I think maybe just finesse, finesse that edge just there a little bit. And there we go. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned, um, what I want to do is add a Gaussian blur to each of these uh, levels of grass. Um, but before I do that, I think, I, you know, just for this image here, this is very slightly different from the final image that I, I ended up on last time. But, you know, this is the way that uh, these edits go. I'm just going to duplicate one more layer of, of grass. Um, and uh, we're just going to, and we'll call that foreground, foreground front because it's right at the front. Um, and we'll just retransform that again, just so that I don't want to recompose this uh, too much. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just stretch that out here, make that as big as I can to just fill the frame with whatever I can. So here we go. And and literally I'm just making sure that the grass is big enough. Okay. And I'll just move it along just to try and remove some of the patterning that's going on there as well. And we'll select um, this just to stretch some of this up a little bit. And just want to make sure I've covered all of those um, white pieces. There's nothing in the white that's showing through here. Okay, to that. Um, we've got a mound now, it's not perfect, but it will do for this particular edit. Um, as I say, on the actual source um, uh, image that I went through, um, I did select um, and spent a lot of time uh, on this mound uh, to make it look perfect. But realistically, now what needs to happen is we need to start to apply some blurring to these. Um, so what I will do is, the uh, on the image that's in the foreground, I will add a filter blur gaussian blur and we'll select around about six i think yeah that should work fine on the next level behind it again filter uh blur gaussian blur and not six because we're now going a little bit behind it but let's say about four 
and on the middle layer uh, we'll do filter and blur gaussian blur and this time we'll go about um, two and a half and then actually on the top of the mound grass we'll do a filter blur gaussian blur and we'll just do one pixel for that and that's creating some level of depth here um, now we can see with this particular image here that the rhino doesn't actually meet uh, where we want him to do so we'll go back to the rhino and we'll press Control t um, and what we can do now is just transform that and plant his feet in the grass I'll just find a little bit more central and just do a little bit of rotate as well just to get that foot down and there we go so okay with that what you might have noticed um and uh, I, I i didn't have this issue when i first edited this photograph the first time around um, but there are a number of white lines uh, here on the rhino um, and um, they're a little bit odd um, and I hadn't noticed them whilst I've, I've just been editing them un until until just now um, but they're actually a result of the uh, transformations that I've been doing here because not only have I been transforming the uh, image but I've also been transforming the mask at, at the same time and because there's a um, a change in the mask if so if we look at the mask here there's a very soft edge here um, so these can be easily solved um, and, and the, what we'll do here is we'll just um, grab a brush um, by pressing the B key and we'll make sure we've got a black foreground which we have done and I'll increase the brush size entirely here and I'm just going to literally uh, set the flow to 100% the opacity is 100% and I'm just going to paint in everything here um, and just fill that mask in this is this is a mask um, we're not really worried about anything else coming through here so just do that and that will do with that and we'll select um, and select that there's one line already gone select the next one up and we'll press alt on that and again same sort of problem here and as soon as i fill that in okay we press um alt on that again that line is now gone come up to the next one and we'll press alt on that just to select the mask and again really really easy super easy fill and press alt on that again that line's gone and there's probably a line above it for the next one so we'll just do that anyway and there we go again easy fill and there we go we've removed the lines uh from from this now the other thing that i think i'm going to do i'm going to recrop this image uh, again um so uh, just so that i can um make sure that we've got a reasonably tight um, remember to select a one by one square make sure that we've got the rhino in there that we want and don't have too much hill because i think we had too much hill before and we'll press ok on that and there we go that's a lot better so when i originally edited this image um i took a good long look at it and for me it just didn't have quite the fine art look about it that i i wanted with um, it being in color um, so i decided to go about editing editing it in black and white and the first problem that i found with editing it in black and white and, and we, we can we can have a look at this right now just by adding a, a black and white uh, layer to this is that it just feels 
just it needs a lot of adjustment and I, I played and I played with various ways of uh, uh, treating this image a, as a whole in the black and white conversion and I think that was my original problem is because there's a lot of colors that are shared between the grasses and the, and the rhino as, as odd as that might seem you know we can do if, if I change the yellows here you can see not only is the grass changing which is pr primarily green but also the rhino is changing so it took a lot of sort of fiddling around with things to see whether or not I could get the right levels um, and what I decided upon was actually to take a different approach to treat this as though they're two separate images um, treat the rhino get the look of the rhino that I want in with the black and white and then get the look of the grass that I want in black and white and then bring the two together again okay so I'll, let me remove that black and white layer that I've just added there. And let's just do a little bit of uh, tidiness and mark all of the grass images here in, and create a, a group from layers. And we'll call this grass. Okay. So what, let's have, have a look at the rhino now. And what I did with the rhino initially was... Um, I added a, a, a camera raw filter to this, which is what we'll go and do now, just to tweak a few more settings again, because I wasn't quite happy with the uh, the way that this looked. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it could have a little bit more texture in it and, and maybe just be a little bit brighter than it currently is. And this will also help the black and white conversion process. So let's uh, add a camera raw filter to the Rhino layer. Obviously, this is where we've rotated it around and done all sorts of other things. So let's just increase the exposure up a little bit. Um, and this will probably take actually a whole stop. Yes, it will. Um, and uh, what we'll do is we'll decrease the saturation a little bit because, again, we're not really too interested in the colors somewhat. So... Let's bring the saturation down around about that level there. Again, now we're already starting to see how this might shape itself out as black and white. And let's just add a little bit more texture to um, to this because I don't think I added enough in the first instance. There we go, lovely. And uh, just increase that now we can see the level of detail that we've got and this is going to work wonderfully and again the the whole point of the black and white conversion is that it's going to it's going to show us the light and the dark areas and the contrast between those a, a lot more uh, which is why I decrease the saturation here because I don't want all of the interplay between those different colors to actually work out um, in, inside that um, black and white conversion here I just want the the shade differences between the light and the dark uh, sort of brown or gray color that we've got on here on this rhino. So I'll press OK on that. Now I always um, use um, Silver FX2 uh, to do my um, black and white conversion because I, I know I can work around um, a, a lot of black and white issues that I've had in the past and I can also get the look and the feel and quite a number of the presets just work straight out the box. Um, so let's add a, a filter to this and we'll go for uh, Nick Collection and we'll go for Silver FX Pro 2. And once that's transferred into there, what it's doing now is just loading that image uh, we'll see the source image here with the background and, and we're not worried about that because we know that the mask once we apply this will actually figure all that out um, and that's fine but as we go through these we can see that there are various looks that Nick has already done and some of these look better than than others um, and um, you know as we go through these we can see what they're like um, until we find one that actually looks like a really good starting point. And that's the thing with presets. Think of presets as not the final image, but a starting point for the image that you want. And, and you know, we can load a preset like this and then actually start to go, well, actually, I want that to be brighter. And, you know, and just 
work around uh, how the image looks. But what I'm going to do is just carry on going through these until I find one of the presets that is a pretty good starting point uh, for this. And this one here, uh, full dynamic and harsh. Uh, what the harsh means is that there's a lot of, um, and I hear there's a difference here between the smooth and the harsh. And actually the harsh has got a, a lot going for it. So um, what I'm going to do here is take this one as a starting point. I need to decrease some of the highlights, as you see in the uh, histogram or loop at the bottom. You can see a lot of those um, have blown out. So I just want to decrease the, um, the, the, the highlights a little bit by, I don't know, maybe about 40%, something like that, just to bring those back a bit. And that's a little bit better now. There's some more detail in those highlights. And uh, let's see what we can do with some structure now as well to add a little bit more structure to it. So structure, we'll, we'll bump the structure up uh, maybe around, uh, around about that level there. And we'll bring in some more structure in the highlights. Um, because let's just zoom in a bit on that. Yeah, we need a little bit more structure on the highlights. In fact, a lot more structure on the highlights around about that level. And let's bring a bit of structure into the midtones to balance that out around about there. And a little bit of fine structure as well. We'll leave the shadows alone because the shadows are mostly, are mostly um, smooth anyway in this one. And we'll just bring in some fine structure here to about that level. Okay, and then generally speaking, what I, what I tend to do is let's just move that up there. Is take a look at some of the color sensitivity because sometimes some of the colors that are playing into this will will react differently. So if you move the red slider, nothing really happens. It goes a bit darker there. We'll leave that where it was. Zero that out. Yellow. Uh, yellow will probably make a big difference. Um, there is a lot of, in the in the um, yellows. Decrease that down there, and you know through trial and error that I did before this, these were the colours that I I finalised on and, and which I was happy with. Um, and pretty much from that point on, all I did was press OK. This will now save that image back to. Um, Photoshop and then Photoshop will apply the mask to that which is done there and now we have a, a very nice black and white rhino now one of the things that I probably should have done before I converted it to black and white would be to have removed some of the marks on the rhino um, however we can we can now do that um, so let's add a new layer and we'll call this um, spot removal and what we'll do i'll just zoom in in now and there, there are various things that we really need to try and clean up with this uh, rhino um lots of little spots around it and, and honestly they'll take no time at all to clean up so we'll use the spot removal tool for this i'll grab my wacom pen and it literally is a case of just going over those and marking them out like that and moving around the image until you see the next one and little little marks one of the advantages i guess of doing it um, in the way that we've done it uh, in after the uh, conversion to black and white is that actually some of the marks um, that are highlighted here are as a result of the way in which the light has been converted um, and you know this is just the sort of perfection level of going through now and making sure you're happy with how things are looking Photoshop is brilliant at doing these sorts of things um, but as I say we did do it after the nick. Um, probably should have done it before the nick um, version, but 
doesn't really matter. And, and now we're just going through all of these. Change your, pen, your brush size to match. You don't really want to go too far over the edge because you can help it. You know, and these wild animals, that you know, they're, they're not going to be mark free entirely, but this is just really things that are standing out, you know, little bright spots here that are standing out uh, on the, the things that were perhaps in front of the camera when, when this was taken. Um, this area here around its uh, sort of knee area, I guess, um, we're just going to take a little bit more cleaning up and there's a different way that we'll do that in a moment but let's just go through all of these spots here remove them yeah because this this animal here has been rolling around in hay um, and to be honest there are, there is no hay around now we've, we've we've taken it away from that hay um, so it's fair to say it's now out of place with that um, we're almost done, I think, on those. And just check down the bottom areas of the legs, just in case there's a couple more. And it doesn't take very long at all to go through this. Um, but there we go. I think that's pretty clean. So the only thing I would really like to clean up is is this area of the knee. And the the difference here is that. Um, We um, we need a different uh, technique here for, for removing that. And, and what I'll do here is use the uh, healing brush. And with the healing brush here, in fact, actually, rather than the healing brush, let's use the patch tool. So what we can do here is just mark an area of uh, the rhino. Let's just say that and then move it up um, to that, that sort of area and release. And that's pretty much all we need to do and then unselect that and then we can go back to the hitting spot removal tool again and now we'll notice there's a mark there and just blend in a couple of those pieces and if we take a look at that yep that works pretty well so now we've removed some of the imperfections uh, from the rhino uh, what I need to do now is look at the way in which the light is shaping uh, on the Rhino. And we've got some light bits coming through here and the back end of the Rhino. Given that all of the lights come in here, that should probably be darker. Some of these folds should probably be a bit darker and some of the highlights need to be changed around. So let's add a new layer and we'll call this uh, Dodge and Burn. And the way that I do it is a way that a lot of other people do it, um, but there are many different ways of doing it. So what I do is I create a, a gray layer. So if I go into edit and fill and I select 50% uh, gray from this background here, and that gives me a completely solid gray background. Uh, what I then do is change the um, blending mode to overlay, uh, sorry, to soft light. And now that means that anything that I draw on here, whether it's uh, dark or light, will actually uh, blend through, okay? Um, the other thing that is important here is that what I don't want to do is just draw over this and, and go over the edges of the rhino, which would be really easy to do. So what's probably best here is if I copy the mask from the rhino, if I select the mask here on the rhino and hold down my Alt key and drag that mask up to the rhino and let go, it's now on the dodge and burn layer and that's a copy of that um, mask so now with the um, dodge and burn uh, tools i can actually go into this uh, here and actually start to um, to dodge and burn away so let's select the burn tool and uh, let's zoom in a little bit first and move around to where i want to bring check out my exposure let's Bring that down to around about 15%. I don't want it too dark. I want to incrementally darken this down. Um, and the first area that I'm going to start on is the back side of the um, rhino here. And I just want to 
bring that down and what I'll do is start right on the edges first because that's the darkest bit. Remember this is a, a round uh, element, um, you know, the back side of this rhino is, is round so if you if you are doing it then work increasing the darkness as you go and that side there. Also here I don't really want much of that light coming through there. Um, darken that down again and darken that down and this fold here again we're, we're now on the the shadow side of the sun so realistically it shouldn't be as bright as this is here so again we'll just take the emphasis off this harsh edge here and just darken that down as well and this is just a case of just going through incrementally touching up enhancing some of the darker areas enhancing some of the lighter areas and it might be hard uh, on this video already to see what i've done uh, but if i turn this uh, layer off and then on already i've made a big difference with that shading um, so again I'll just move to another part of the animal and let's just add a little bit more darkness in and this is just really finessing the shadows, finessing the highlights a little bit, and just adding a little bit more detail to to things, and it just helps to enhance the feeling of this. And this is really where your personal uh, artistic talents come in a little bit, and just enhancing those ribs a little bit more here. And those areas and what I want to do just darken down that edge of the ear there and just this side of the horn okay and now I'm just going to sw switch over to um, the dodge tool so dodge will lighten again just watch your exposure here so just bring that up a little touch and always nice to work with a soft edge tool to this again so what i want to do here is just bring up this head so this is the bit that is in contact with the sun so again just bring that up a little bit and again the tip of the ears and over here and what the other thing that i want to do is just try and bring a little bit of light back into the eye now I know the eye is, is on the shadow side, but you know we can we can bring bring a little bit more detail into it. A couple of wisps over that, and that already brings back something. And zoom back out. And where else do we need? So again, where we've been touching up with the uh, low lights, we're touch up on the opposite side with the highlights a little bit again they help to create that sort of definition add some depth to that again a bit there a bit there just around there and this doesn't need a lot because fundamentally the light was in the right direction when we when we took this photograph um let's take a look at that so we have that's with and that's without the shaping and as you can see it's very subtle doesn't really add a lot but it's well worth doing and again this can continue until you're really happy with with it um, but for the purpose of this tutorial i'll stop at this point okay we're pretty happy with the rhino uh, it's time to focus on the grass again so selecting the grass uh, folder uh, what we want to do is convert this into a smart object. Um, this will allow us to do a number of things which we can go back and do again later. But we want it, it to affect everything that's inside that group. So convert that group into a smart object. And essentially the smart object just puts those layers into a container which then other things can happen to at the, uh, the end of it. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is add a camera raw filter because this grass needs to be changed. It's very very bright at the moment so we'll do um, camera raw filter 
and as you can see we're only messing with the grass uh, I want to decrease the exposure a little bit just a bit too high and again just like we did with the with the rhino we changed the, the way in which this looked so that actually, it will work better with the black and white conversion when we go through that um, we can add a little bit more contrast I think um, around there and let's decrease the highlights somewhat um, to around about that point. Um, decrease the shadows, bring in a bit more shadow depth um, to about that point. Um, take away a bit of the clarity because we don't really want the focus isn't on the grass the grass is there to place our subject so we'll take away some of the oops wrong one uh, we'll take away some of the clarity uh, but not a huge amount just to take the edge off it um, and again vibrancy we'll we'll drop the vibrancy down a little bit because again don't forget, this is going to be black and white, so we don't need it to have a, a, a huge amount of color depth in this. We're just going to be choosing a, a color that's appropriate, and we'll say OK with that. And already that's, I think, brought a slightly more realistic um, grass color to this, whereas before it was very, very bright, very saturated. So just like before, we're now going to go into um, Nick Collections and the Silver FX Pro and load the grass. And again, that's going to go through and work out all the different um, looks of the grass in with various styles. Um, and yet again, we're going to choose a um, starting point here uh, for something uh, that is almost right and, and uh, having gone through this process before I don't need to to show you every different version of this but I do know that the one that I'm looking for is number 43 which is a contrasty what's it that one um, I think it might be on my imported ones actually No. Let's go back to my preset library and 40, 45, sorry, contrasty. Um, and then I all I did was I changed the um, sensitivity of the green, bringing that down all the way down, and the yellow, reducing the yellow. Because remember what I showed before was that when I was doing the black and white on the Rhino. Yellow was uh, present in the Rhino image, but it was also present in the grass. Um, and if we tra drag that down to around about minus 25, there we go, that's the sort of look. And then press OK on that. And once we come back into Photoshop now, we should have um, almost a completely black and white um, image. Um, we've still got the um, sky to convert into black and white as well, so pretty easily done. Okay, so um, we've obviously gone with black and white. Um, we've got black and white grass, we've got black and white rhino, we don't have a black and white sky. Um, so let's go down to the sky layer, which is in the background, and we'll select the sky layer. And then let's insert here a, a black and white layer. Which it has done above that. And again, now we can just finesse the levels so we get that sort of level that we're, we're interested in of black and whiteness. And you know, the sort of black and white sky that we're looking for is very, very slightly gray. there we go now what i noticed here as soon as i converted to uh, black and white uh, with the sky was that there was a, a definitive line here 
which I hadn't really noticed during the edit, and I'm not sure I necessarily had this the first time that I edited this. And if we go back into the sky color and temporarily just change the color here, you can see here that the sun that I drew in uh, is filling the um, background layer uh, that it's on. And, and as such, it's then clipping at the edges, which is creating that um, hard edge that we've got there. Um, so the problem here is, is actually the sun layer. Um, so let's fix that now. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll remove the sun layer entirely, and then I'll create a new layer, which has gone above the black and white layer that we had. And I will decrease the size of the canvas so that I can see where I'm drawing entirely. And I will select uh, a brush and I'll press D to default to the colors um, back to black and white and press the X key to move over to white. And then I'll increase the size of my brush and the softness of my brush. So I'll select a soft brush and then really, really increase the size of my brush again like I had before, but this time, instead of putting it in the middle, um, I'm just literally going to be selecting the edge corner here um, and just press down once. And then I think if I go back into that, that should have created sun, which is very, very marginally there. And I'll just rename that as sun. And again, I think what I will probably do is go back to the black and white conversion here and just tweak the, the blue a little bit and the cyan just a touch more. And then that will allow that sun to show through a little bit more. Um, and again, go back to the sun. And now with the free transform, I can actually bring that further down. Entirely. There we go. That's much nicer. So we're almost here for this image now, and this is fairly like the original image that I, I started off with. Um, but it, the final thing that I did to this image was it kind of went a, a little bit against the grain of that sort of fine art look that I wanted, and that was really to help to sell this as well. And that was to add a little bit of grain. Um, and it does make an absolute difference. So let's go to the top of the layer stack and uh, add a new layer, and let's call this layer grain. And the way that I did it here was, again, this was a, in another sort of non-destructive manner. Uh, so if I fill that um, with gray, 50% uh, gray, do okay. Obviously the, um, the um, blend mode takes it away uh, but if we select um, overlay um, and what we can now do is do a camera raw filter and we'll set camera raw and from this gray level here and again because we're in a camera raw uh, filter now it's just acting upon that layer that we've got um, and what we'll do is we'll go into the uh, FX and we'll add uh, an amount of grain and we'll, we'll select something around about 20. Uh, it doesn't need to be too deep, enough to see it. Um, and if I zoom in here, you can see the grain, it is there, and we'll press OK on that. And again, it, it's fair, it's reasonably not noticeable, uh, which kind of begs the question as to why. But it is there enough to actually sell the image and and by doing so it, it kind of gives that uniformity because all of these elements have come from different places you know the the rhino was photographed separately the grass has been constructed and layered up and the sky doesn't even exist but by adding this grain level here uh, it actually just takes away that sort of clinical look and adds that final level and if i zoom in and I turn off that grain 
and then turn it back on again. There's not a huge amount of difference and it's very, very subtle, but that is it. And uh, there we go, that's our final image. And uh, the final thing to do, of course, is press save. So now we're back in Lightroom and just reflecting on what we've done. Uh, we've gone through a whole load of processing and we've taken this image here and converted it into this image here. And, you know, the two images are very different. Uh, this for me is what I think of when I think of a very majestic wild animal. They're, they're there, they own the land, they're in control of their, their surroundings. And, you know, this is a beautiful rhino. Um, and, um, you know, I obviously prefer not to see him in a zoo. Um, but, you know, it's the only place that I can get to see these animals at the moment. And, uh, you know, fortunately, these zoos do do an awful lot for conservation. And I'm quite grateful that I, I have the opportunity to see them uh, when I can save up enough money to go over to Africa and, and spend some time over in Africa. Then I hope to see these beautiful animals in their natural uh, environments um, and uh, see them in, in their splendor. And then most of this editing process i can throw away because i won't need it because i'll have the animal in their ordinary surroundings but anyway hope you like what we've done today this forms pretty much the basic of a lot of the editing that i go through um, cutting out the subject from the background creating a new background creating a new foreground blending the things together shaping the animal in terms of dodge and burn cleaning up any any spots in terms of spot removal uh, potentially doing any black and white conversion if I go for a black and white image um, and then just making the thing look nice and look artistic anyway thank you very much for watching and uh, hope to be back with another video soon bye bye